Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Business Innovators Radio. This is your host, Constant Taylor. Today, we have a very special guest on the show, and they're going to share some very exciting information with us. So, If you're looking to increase your personal and professional effectiveness, then you've come to the right place. Our special guest today is Mary Loverde. Mary's been speaking professionally for over 21 years. The content that Mary primarily speaks on is helping people stay connected to what's important. She also does work-life balance and strategies on helping people take the next step. Mary has spoken both nationally and internationally, and she's based out of Colorado. She has four books, and her latest is called The Invitation. When you're ready, take your next step. Mary, that's quite a bio. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. And we're glad to have you. I'd like to kick off the show by asking you if you could tell the listeners a little bit about your speaking business and how you help people become more effective and successful in life. Well, I'll... I believe that connection is the solution to just about every problem we will ever face. And so that's my philosophy. All of the strategies that I teach around the world are to help you stay connected to something that's really important. You know, there's lots of disconnection and distraction and overwhelm. And I think that all of that simply comes from the fact that it isn't that you got every, you didn't get everything done. The problem came when you disconnected from something that was really important to you. So instead of trying to go faster, do three things at once, on and on to all those other strategies, the question to ask really isn't what do I need to do? It's with whom should I connect? Hmm. And sometimes it'll be your business partner, and sometimes it'll be your pillow, and you need a good night's sleep. And sometimes it's your child and who has a soccer game, and sometimes you'll be staying late at work to get the project done. As long as you feel that you're staying connected to what's important, we thrive, and when humans thrive, the sky is the limit. Okay. Now, in terms of connectivity, the way that we connect to things has changed over the past 10 years. There's a lot of social media connectivity. What is your thoughts on that? Has it helped the situation? Has it perverted the situation? What what, what do you think? Well, yes and no. Just like everything else, the pendulum swings, and it swings too far when we get a new invention. Things get overused, and then somehow we find a middle ground. The interesting thing about the electronics, technology, social media now is that there is a little bit of a component of addiction, and that's why it's been hard for all of us to let the pendulum swing back. When we get a little ding that we have a message, or when we see that there are 27 emails or whatever coming in, we get a little hit of dopamine in our brain. And dopamine makes us feel good. It's that same little satisfaction when we cross something off of our to-do list. We get a little hit of dopamine. And so now we're kind of addicted to that process to the point on on average, we look at our cell phones 150 times a day. Wow. A lot of times it's not even that conscious. But that's what the researchers came up with, and some of us probably more. So the strategy that I ask people to use with this is called a policy. Policy means wisdom and management, and you can wisely manage all of your technology. So when you think about what you really value, um, perhaps it's, let's say, it's time with your wife on Sunday Sunday morning. I just had a guy talk about this in one of my seminars. And he said, well, his policy was, he traveled a lot, his policy was that every Sunday morning he would do all of his receipts for the the last week and get those sent in before he went out. And I said to him, so you're doing all of this these tasks and entering it all on the computer and sending it off. Kind of sacred real estate, pretty important real estate for receipts. 
You travel a lot. With whom should you connect? Perhaps sitting on the porch with a cup of coffee, reading the newspaper with the dog. Maybe you're going to cuddle with your wife. Maybe this is out. Is your policy really Sunday morning? And she, he just got a big grin on his face and he said, you're absolutely right. And by the way, that's what my wife's been telling me. <laughs> so if we can have a policy that we, for example, turn the phone off at night. Not that many of us get calls in the middle of the night. The fear of missing out. So the policy says at 11 o'clock, I check it one more time, and then I turn it off until the morning. What it, I'm not here to be the technology police and tell people what their policy should be. But if you ask yourself, who, do you, who or what do you want to connect with, and then what policy could I make so that I could connect with it better? Yeah. Does that I, make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's very, you know, very near and dear to my heart. I mean, I check my phone uh, many times a day, and I'm, I'm sure there's an app that allows us to clock how many times we check our, we look at our phone. But, but, but uh, of course, there but, is. But one, one, one policy that I've had for, Mm, over, I think it's over 10 years. I, I never sleep. I, I never have the phone in the bedroom. So the phone is always outside of the bedroom and also don't have a TV in the bedroom as well. So that's kind of the sacred, you know, the sacred sleeping space. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And so see the value that is underneath that, mm -hmm. the value that is underneath no technology after a certain part or in the bedroom is that you value other things, uh -huh. the other things you can do, sleep, make love, have quiet time, conversations. So you see what you're asking. This is a great example. What you're asking is not what I should do, but with whom should I connect? Uh -huh. Excellent. So, so helping people stay connected and what's important and strategies to pick the next step. Let's. How do you how do you help people pick pick with picking the next step? It's something where folks have you know many directions to take, many options, and it can be overwhelming. Many times, people just freeze and do nothing. Yeah, this is a really passionate part of my business. I'm so excited when people get to um, take their next step because they've used some of the strategies. Again, the question, what do I need to do, is not really the first question. After you figure out what it is you want, you want to get a raise, you want to be a senior VP, you want enough time to go coach your son's soccer team, whatever it is, the question is now not what I want to do because it's a long, overwhelming list. The question you want to ask next is, what do I need to quit? There are things in the way of what you just said you wanted. And until you learn to quit those, you're not going to be able to get them. Huh. I learned this when I took ballroom dance competition lessons and I was studying with the Ukrainian National Ballroom Dancers. At the end of six weeks, I had to do my little dance. And the instructor, Ina, said, you made 50 mistakes, Mary. Huh. And I'm thinking, 50 mistakes in two minutes? Are you <laughs> kidding? How is that even possible? <laughs> And she said, yes, 50 mistakes. But she said, you didn't make 50 different mistakes. You did one thing wrong 50 times. You roll your shoulders forward, and that drops your head, and your head is heavy, and it imbalances you, and all your turns are wobbly. If you'll just quit that one thing, 50 mistakes will go away. Huh. And that's how taking your next step works. There are... One, maybe two really important things that you need to quit. And there's an excellent chance that you know what it is because you've tried to quit it before. It may be a personality trait. It may be the procrastination that, that you aren't going to get more education. There's some kernel in there. It may be that you're hanging around with friends who aren't encouraging you. And they kind of want you to stay down at your level and you're going to have to quit them. It may be that you have to quit so much time on Facebook 
hmm. so that you can do job searches or, as you are, learn Spanish. Mm-hmm. But almost always, after you know what it is you want, you need to look at the landscape and say, what's in the way and how can I quit it? That is, that's an excellent, that's an excellent point. One of the things that, that I, that I have done in terms of deciding what to do and what not to do is to write down my values, rank my values, and then that kind of determines my navigational point in terms of what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. How do you, uh, what do you think about integrating values into the approach of taking the next step? Well, you, you're absolutely right on. Everybody has to have their why. Why do you want to quit? Why do you want this thing that you say you want? And why do you want to quit it so that you can get it? Um, you know, getting still is a thing most of us don't do. When you want to sit down and figure out what you want, when you want to figure out well, what your values are, I mean, I admire that you actually sit down and look at those because most of us say, I want something, but I don't really have time to figure out a strategy. Or even bigger than that, most of us don't sit down and figure out what we really, really want. We're kind of swept away in the daily minutia and days, weeks, months, years go by and you still haven't formulated a clear vision of what it is you really want in the first place. And when we look at the greatest leaders of all times, they got still. They sat under trees. They went to the tops of mountains. They spent 40 days in the desert. Gandhi didn't start screaming that everyone should get a move on because he needed world peace and he needed it right now. (laughs) Mm. He got still. Mm -hmm. And yet most of us think that when we want to get clear, we should move, uh-huh. get going. Uh-huh. When, when I'm going to send you an email later that we send follow-ups to all of our interviewers, and I'm going to send you a tweet that came to me last week. So you'll, you'll see the date that was originally tweeted, but it was about seven or eight days ago. And I was, I had maybe 10 things going on. I had a, client call and postpone uh, a project. And I, I had so so many things twirling around. And then it came to me, I said, the most powerful thing that I can do right now is be still. And I, I tweeted that out. And I think it's gotten maybe 40 or 50, 40 or 50 retweets. But what you're saying on, on a resonation level on a scale of one to 10 is, is off the charts right now with, uh, with me. Continue. <laughs> Well, go to the head of the class because most of us don't do that. When I do my program, sometimes we have those where you have electronic response immediately. And I'll ask them, how many of you know or are pretty sure what it is you want? And on average, about 87% of the people say they're not sure. And then I ask them, do you ever get still and think about it or journal about it or, you know, just sit down and wonder well, no, they're all very busy, and that is our issue. So clarity will come with stillness, mm-hmm. even though at first it's going to even sound really no- noisy when you get still. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I I've, I need to get back there, but at one time I was meditating for about an hour per day. Now it's probably 15, mm-hmm. 15 minutes if I'm... You know, if I'm in a good in a, in a good position, but I need to I need to get back there. And and like you said, journaling is is powerful. Being still. Another thing that I would pose to you is writing uh, questions. R- write a question to yourself. You know, what should I do about this, this, and this? And then let it go. And what I find is 100% of the time, an answer will come to me. Very wise. I agree. I agree. Some of these things are so simple and we try to make them hard. So let's, let's talk about your, your latest book, uh, The Invitation, when you're ready to take your next step. And I know that it's included some of – you've mentioned some of the components there, but uh, what, are, what, what are the readers going to get out of that? 
Well, there are um, some clear strategies that they can use in any part of their life. Um, it's easy reading. It's fun. Some people have said it was funny. You know, you can't make this uh, boring and hard. And at the end of every chapter, there are some little exercises, and I do mean little. Sometimes, most of the time, just one question, so that by the end of the book, they'll be much clearer about what they want. They'll have some strategies. They'll see a path. One of my favorite chapters in it is to uh, embrace ambiguity. You know, after you get clear. And then you've said, okay, I'm going to quit some things. Then you feel like you're kind of swimming in, in wet cement <laughs> because it's not really time yet to do anything. You have to face the fact that it's iffy. It's dicey. You know, the greatest geniuses of all time, Leonardo da Vinci, for example, said that his greatest talent and the, the key to his brilliance was the fact that he could embrace paradox and ambiguity and uncertainty. Hmm. So I learned a very powerful lesson this way. A good friend of mine is a mission specialist for uh, NASA, for the International Space Station. And when he interviewed the job for the job, they had three questions for him. And the first one was, why are the astronauts fall uh floating, and he said, well, they're not floating, they're falling. They're falling 17,500 miles an hour. <laughs> and the next one, they wanted to know, well, what if, if you could turn a refrigerator off in a sealed room? Or not off, but open the door. Will it get cooler? And he goes, no. A machine creates heat, and the room's going to get hotter. So he's aching it. And then they asked him the third question. And he thought and thought and thought and thought and thought, and he was pretty sure he had just failed the interview because he didn't know. So he looked him right in the eye and said, I don't know. <laughs> And he left the interview certain that he did not get this job. Uh-huh. Well, it was a turning point because had the interviewer gotten any whiff that he was guessing, he would not have gotten his job because, he said, you have to be willing to say, I don't know. Uh-huh. He said, if I open a valve on the International Space Station and it's the wrong one, I'm guessing, everybody on board just died. Uh-huh. And so in the book, I point out that it has to be okay to say, I don't know. Uh And Tom, my friend, who's this uh, space station guy, said four words that really impressed me. They must trust you. And I think that's the perfect advice for people who are taking their next step. Sometimes we're told to fake it till we make it. And I don't agree with that. I think trust is way more valuable and saying, I don't know, let me find somebody who does, is way more important. Agreed. Wow, very powerful information. And the interviews always uh, go by so quickly when we have such a powerful and informative speaker such as yourself. Now, with um, with our last 60 seconds here, if the viewers would like to get in contact with you, learn more information about your services. How can they do that? Well, you can email me, marylaverde at gmail.com. I love to get feedback. Um, you can go to my website at marylaverde.com. I have a newsletter. I have a blog, um, all of that. So, um, And I have some retreats. So if anybody is ready to take their next step, that might be of interest. So I would love to hear from people. Okay, excellent. Well, Mary, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was very powerful information that you shared with our listeners. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.